Amen. Good to see each and every one of you here. Uh, may I say unto you, for all those that worked in the yard sale, I think when it's all said and done, it's going to be right at $1,800 or more that was made. And uh, so we just appreciate all the hard work from the yard sale and all of the effort that's been made of cleaning up the church and helping get things pulled together. And we just appreciate all that you've done the last several uh, days and weeks there putting all that together. And uh, we just thank you from the bottom of our heart. And may God bless you greatly for all that you do for his kingdom and for his glory. A few announcements I need to make um, on the women's Tuesday morning Bible study. They'll be completing their study on God's covenant this coming Tuesday. To celebrate, they'll be serving a light luncheon. So every lady in the church is invited to come at noon to the fellowship hall. So Tuesday, ladies, if uh, you ain't got nothing to do, come to the church. Come with them and eat with them for this luncheon and come be part of the teaching on the covenant. And uh, that will be wrapping up. But beginning the following Tuesday, they will begin a five-week study on the book of Jude. Now, Jude is a rich book. It's one chapter. But my, is it rich. And you're going to have a five-week study on the book of Jude. And I know you're going to enjoy that. After you get done with the book of Jude, your ladies are going to start a study on the seven churches of Revelation. So all of the ladies are invited to attend on Tuesday to these Bible studies. And I know that you'll be greatly blessed for all that you do for the kingdom of God and the study of His Word. So you ladies, come out and be there and be a part of that. And us men, well, we're just going to have to miss out, I guess, on it. It's ladies only on this Bible study. And we wish all of the ladies the very, very best. Um, this week, Wednesday, I was not here at church. I went down to Memphis, Tennessee to be with the Tomberlin family. Uh, as I went down, I rode down uh, with Pastor Eddie Brewer there at Cartuga J. We drove down to be with them. And they got a, nah, okay kind of report. Not a good report, not a bad report, but a if kind of report. Heard the word mite a whole lot. My dad always taught me mites were only on chickens. Didn't like that word mite. But, uh, but here's what they told Daniel. They said the five places that the neuroblastoma has been showed up and we've been treating. They've not shrunk, but they've not yet got no bigger. We're just calling it stable. The problem is we're just calling it stable. The young has been very toxic from all of the treatments that he's been having to go through. And not much quality of life at all. And just been very, very sick during this time. Then they said that it appears there might be another spot of cancer on the T5 vertebrae in his back. So, uh, you know, that's, that wasn't the report we was wanting to hear. Uh, but that's the report they got. Uh, I don't know exactly what they're going to do. The conversation was before we had left that probably wouldn't take no more treatments till January. Uh, enjoy his birthday, enjoy Thanksgiving, enjoy Christmas and New Year's. And then go back in January, have another scan to see if that spot's still showing up or if it is not there. And then decide on treatment if they continue the same way they've been going through treatments or... There's some clinical studies, some trials that are going to be starting up within about a month. Uh, so they might get in one of those trials. So they're not really sure. But one thing we are sure of, that our healing coming from the Lord and that God's still on the throne no matter what. So just pray for Daniel, that God would be with him and uplift him. And, and uh, I just I believe in a miracle. I'm always going to cling to a miracle that God's going to just heal that guy. Man. And not only can't, she's going to be gone, and he's going to get up out of that wheelchair to just take off running. And God do something great. So pray for them uh, in your prayers that God would touch them. Heavenly Father, we love you today, God. And Lord, we just thank you for your mercy, your grace, your love. God, Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, God, to be in your house. And Father God, today I ask, Father God, that you would move, Father God, in a mighty way. I'm asking, Father Lord God, that the Holy Ghost would have free course and liberty here today. Lord, that each and every one be touched by the Word of God today. Father, Lord, we're believing, God, in an outpouring, Father, of your Spirit. God, I'm asking, God, that the windows of heaven be open, God, that you pour out a blessing, Father God, amongst your people today. Lord, Father God, you see our sister, God, with her blood pressure, Father. But Lord, I know, God, that you can speak to that 
that heart right now, God. Lord, you can speak to it, Father God, and this blood pressure remain normal, God, in our correct rhythm. God, Sister Eloise, Lord, I just pray, God, that you would touch this shoulder today, God. Lord God, give her the mobility, Father God, that she once had. Give her the strength in it, Father. Lord God, for Randall and his family, Lord, just move and touch. Father, Lord, this four-year-old boy, this young child, God, Lord, with cancer. Father, I pray, Father God, that you would touch this child. Lord, that you would heal his body. Lord, for Daniel, God. Lord, so many, Father, children, God, sick and afflicted. But God, you're able to heal. You're able to touch today. You're able to do all things. And Father, we ask God that your anointing would be in this service. And to you be all glory, all honor, and all praise. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
services. He's been putting them out on the radio, on the internet, and also on YouTube. If, uh, if you're able to watch on YouTube, you can pull up some of the services that we've had here. And he's got DVDs. He's recorded some of the services and CDs and different things. So if you would like one of those, if you would see him, I'm sure that he would make it a way for you to get that. Listen, any way we can get the gospel out. That's what we want to do. He's also hooked up a, a mini disc player up there where we can have some soundtracks and he's going to come around and sing a song for us this morning. Brother Jerry, come on around and sing a song today. Long years ago while out in sin, I had no hope, had no peace within. Down on my knees in agony, I prayed to Jesus and he gladly set me free. I never shall forget the day. When all the burdens of my soul rolled away, it made me happy to let it free. I'll sing and shout it for he's everything to me. Now I feel him by my side. My feeble steps, he comes to guide. When trials come, he comforts me. Through faith in him or sin, I have victory. I never shall forget the day. When all the burdens of my soul rolled away, it made me happy, glad and free. I'll sing and shout it for he's everything to me. I never shall forget the day. with you this morning. Turn with me to the book of Psalm. Psalm chapter 23. The Shepherd's Psalm. Psalm 23 here this morning. When you find your place in the 23rd Psalm, I'll ask all that are able to stand to honor the reading of the Word of God. I'd ask you last Sunday to be praying for me. I knew I was going to have a, a busy week this past week. And let me say unto you, I thank you for your prayers from from Monday morning till midnight, Wednesday night, I had put over 1,200 miles uh, behind me traveling back and forth to meetings in the Memphis, Tennessee. And I just appreciate all of your prayers through that, uh, that God was with me during all that traveling. Psalms 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For Thou art with me, Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup 
runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I want to look at verse number four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the reading of the Word of God today. I thank you, Lord, for each and every one, Father, that is under the sound of my voice this morning. I thank you, Father God, for the presence of the Almighty. And Lord, I ask God that you would anoint me, Father, to preach the Word, anoint the ears of those that are here to hear. And Father God, let the name of Jesus be uplifted and let Him be glorified. And God will give you all the praise for it. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen and amen. You can be seated here this morning. Yeah, last Sunday afternoon, I told the church that on Sunday morning, during the service last Sunday morning, it just seemed like the Spirit of God was speaking to me. Even while I was delivering the message on Sunday morning, I kept hearing the Holy Spirit whisper in my ear, fresh oil, fresh oil. And we spoke there on Sunday night out of Ecclesiastes chapter number 10, where dead flies will cause the ointment to stink. It will cause it to have a smell to it. And how that we need to empty that horn of oil and let God give us fresh oil. I want a fresh anointing every time I come to the pulpit. Every time I come to deliver God's Word, I want God to give us a fresh anointing for this very hour in which we're gathered in. I've asked Him this morning, God give me fresh oil. And I took some time and I prayed a lot this week about the shepherd. May I tell you, the shepherd is a very special person. The shepherd is the one that took care of the flock, took care of the sheep, and all through the Word of God, you seen God, He showed favor unto the shepherd. It was the shepherds that the angelic host showed himself unto and said, Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, and how the shepherds come to seek Him. But when we think of the shepherd, we know that the shepherd has certain tools. Now, I don't have one. And I told my family, if you ever give me anything, give me a shepherd's staff. Because I want a shepherd's staff with a hook in it. Where I don't have to use a rod that is used for a coat hanger to be my shepherd's staff. But this morning, you will just have to imagine I've got a hook on the end of my staff. And whoever brought this to the yard sale, I greatly do appreciate it. I'll give you a small donation after church is over for helping me out this morning. But when we look into the Word of God, the first time we see the word staff used in Scripture, we come to a place where we've been in Sunday school the last few weeks. Jacob, as he was going to meet with his brother Esau, what had we learned about Jacob? Jacob had been with his father-in-law Laban. He had been to the place that he had married Leah, he had married Rachel, he had had their handmaidens, he had had children, he had grown and he had flourished, his sheep had multiplied, his cattle had multiplied. God had just blessed everything that Jacob had. Jacob was a shepherd. Jacob took care of the livestock. And now on his journey to meet Esau in Genesis chapter number 32, he's divided his family. He split them up in two companies, fearing that Esau would kill some of them. And he went to God in prayer. And he said, with my staff, I have crossed this Jordan River. He was asking God to deliver him. He said, with my staff. He went to God symbolizing, God, you have made me a shepherd. You have made me a great people. You have given me this staff. You have given me this place of authority. And now, God, I need you. The staff was a symbol of the shepherd. That staff was used, Brother Harold, when the enemy came in to thwart them off, to make the lion and the bear to scatter. That staff with that crook on the end, which I do not have, 
was used to gather the sheep nigh unto him. Something else that staff was used for is when a you had a baby lamb. That baby lamb might get separated from its mother. If the shepherd was just to reach down and scoop that little baby up in his arms, he would get the smell of the shepherd on it, and that mother might not allow that baby lamb to nurse. So he would take that hook, Brother Jerry, and he would pick up that baby, and he would reach it over, and he would lay it gently down by its mother. My God, sometimes, church, we get separated. Sometimes we get to the place with God that we're walking away from God. There's times, brother, I've needed the rod of correction. But many more times, God has simply just reached out that staff. He has hooked me. He has lifted me up. And He's put me right back where I belong. If you're here this morning and you wandered astray, from God. You might feel like you need the rod of correction, but may I tell you this morning that the good shepherd that we find in John chapter number 10 will reach forth and He will hook you and He will lift you and put you right back where you belong today in His presence. But something, even though I cared for sheep when I was young, I did not know. That shepherd would also use that hook to reach and get a lamb that was trying to wander off by the leg. And he would hook that lamb by the leg and say, No, I'm not letting you go there. And that lamb would try to make it on three legs and he just couldn't and he would quit. There's been times that temptation has come in our lives. And for just a moment, we would almost want to fall into divers' temptation. But the Lord reached out and hooked us, didn't He? And said, no, no, my child. I'm not letting you go there. You need to think about that decision just a little bit. Saints of God, isn't it good to know that we've got a Lord that loves us, that cares for us, that He sees what's in front of us. Listen, our shepherd don't lead us into dry and barren places like Moses did to the backside of the desert. He'll lead us by the still waters. He'll lead us into green pastures. And when He said, I shall not want, He said, I means I don't need a care for anything because the Lord's looking out after me. I can tell you this morning, you don't have to worry. You don't have to fear. You don't have to, to be bound up by anxiety. The Good Shepherd is watching over you. Amen. Jacob had that staff. When it come time for Jacob to die, what happened? He rose up from the bed. And he leaned on that staff. And he stretched forth his hands and he blessed Manasseh. And he blessed Ephraim. He blessed the sons of Joseph leaning on that staff. When we go into the book of Exodus, what do we find? We find that Moses is leading the children of Israel. Right. Moses was a shepherd, right? So whether it's called the rod, whether it's called the staff, it's the same tool in a lot of places in that Old Testament. Moses said, how will I go before Pharaoh? And God told him, he said, cast it down. What happened? It became a serpent. Pick it up by the tail. And what happened? It became a staff. What about Aaron? Aaron had a rod. And what happened? He said, I'll show who I'll choose. Aaron's rod budded and brought forth beautiful flowers. And it showed that he was God's chosen. And it was the rod that Moses would stick up over over the Red Sea and the waters would stand up on a heap. My God, what is it a symbol of? It's a symbol of the power of Almighty God. Saints of God, we've got the staff of the Lord. We've got the power of the Holy Ghost going with us. We don't have to fear though we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death because we're not walking there alone. God is with us. And He'll lead us. And He'll care for us. Now we know in that time of Exodus at the Passover. How was they supposed to eat the Passover? Was they supposed to eat it barefoot? Oh no. 
He said, have your shoes on your feet. We're going to eat it during the night or we're to have our pajamas on. No. You got your clothes on. You're getting ready to go on a journey. He said, furthermore, when you eat the Passover that night, have your staff in your hand. Brother, I'd have a hard time with a microphone, a staff, and a fork. But I'd glad to lay the microphone down and pick up the fork, probably. They were to eat the Passover with the staff in their hand. The staff was important. God was telling them, you're not going to leave your staff in Egypt. You're not going to flee and leave that staff. You pick up that staff and you take it with you. That's how important the staff was. We can go on down to the prophets and we'll find Elisha. We'll find the story of the Shunammite. Those of us that were in district fellowship heard the brother preach and he talked about the Shunammite and her son. How he got sick and he died. He said, my head, my head. And he passed away. And the Shunammite woman told her husband, you call the servants. You saddle me up a donkey. I've got to go to the man of God. There comes a time, women, we just got to go to the presence of the Lord. Whether the priest of the home's going or not, we got to determine I'm going to get in the presence of God. Thank God for some women that are not afraid to get a hold of God. When us men get slack in our responsibility, when us men Men get slack in the church. Thank God God's got a group of women that know how to get a hold of God and get in the presence of God Almighty. She said, I'm going to the men of God. She come into where Elisha was. She said, you've got to come and pray for my son. Elisha found Jehazi, his servant. You look like a good Jehazi. I need you. Luke said, surely not me. Surely you hear. Jehazi, you go and you lay my staff on that boy. That way. Now you come back. He sent him with the symbol of his power. The symbol of his authority. This wasn't just anybody's staff. This was Elisha, the prophet of God, the anointed of the Lord, the symbol of the power of God. You take it and you go. You lay it on that boy. Saints of God, do we do the same? Sure we do. We'll take from Paul's teaching in the book of Acts. We'll anoint a prayer cloth. We'll send it forth. You take it unto the sick. But pastor, I know the rest of the story. Jehazi got there with that staff and nothing happened. That's right. But that mother didn't give up, did she? Uh-uh. Elisha, I appreciate you sending Jehazi with your staff. This is my boy I'm talking about. I'm not leaving without you. You're getting on that donkey. And you're going with me. That might be called prophet napping. you get that in a minute. You're going with me. You're going to my boy. The man of God got there. He laid himself upon that boy, didn't he? More than one time. But what happened? That boy sneezed. Life come back into that boy. God raised him up. Saints of God, I'm telling you, the staff is symbolic of the power of God in our life. It's important for us to have a symbol of our faith. Oh, what are you talking about, Pastor? Anybody remember Ronald Reagan? Who was Ronald Reagan? Say it loud. Oh, not the Ronald Reagan I'm talking about. The Ronald Reagan I'm talking about was a Baptist preacher over in Townsend, Tennessee. That Ronald Reagan that was a Baptist preacher over around Townsend, Tennessee, something happened 
to him. You know what happened to him? He got to praying, and all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost of God come upon him, and he started speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance unto him. And he went to his church, and he told them, he said, I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. I started speaking in other tongues. You know what the church did? They said, you're not our pastor no more. And they kicked him and his family out of the parsonage. And they was having church of God, General Assembly, in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And he said, I hear they're Pentecostal people. I'll go down and join them. And he started telling people his story. And he went all the way to the general overseer, a man by the name of Ray Hughes. And Ray Hughes got to the pulpit, my God. And he said, I hear there's a preacher in here. They got filled with the Holy Ghost. His church kicked him and his family out. He has nowhere to live. I want him to come forward. And then Ronald Reagan got up there on the stage in Chattanooga, I believe it was. And he said, how many of you pastors will let this man come in your church and preach revival? Guess what? He was booked just about every week out of the year when he left there. I got to meet that man, Ronald Reagan. He told me, he told us one night in a church service, he said, I was preaching in a little town. He said, the church wasn't growing. The church was struggling. I didn't know what to do. I was praying to God. He said, God told me to put on a gown, put on a white sheet, dress up like an old prophet or a priest, get a staff in my hand, and at three o'clock in the morning, start walking the sidewalk in the middle of the night, praying from house to house. God, would you touch this family? God, would you touch this home? God, would you save their loss? God, would you let them come to church? Say the law enforcement officer pulled up, and here's this man with ashes on his face, a staff in his hand, walking the sidewalk in the middle of the night. I believe the preacher found out real quick, I'm going to leave him alone. Great God. And God done something great in his town. Sometimes we've got to pick up the staff. And we've got to go forward in faith. Saints of God, He's given us a staff of the Holy Ghost. We've got to go forward in the faith. We've got to declare what thus saith the Word of God. God will do great things. Those of you who got your Bible open, turn with me to the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 6. The Gospel according to Mark, chapter number 6. If you was a shepherd, what's one thing that you would take with you? Let me hear you. Tell me something else if you was a shepherd you would take with you. Food. I like the way you think. Sister, I'll come meet your house anytime. <laughs> Food. What else would you take? What did David take? Oh. What else would a shepherd take? Water. Sling. Got to have something in that sling. Rock. Got to have ammunition, don't you? A sling with a real rock does you no good. You know what I was going to do Friday night? I told my wife, we went and eat supper. I said, honey, I'm going to Walmart. When a husband tells his wife to go to Walmart, she knows something's wrong. I said, I'm buying my hunting license. I'm going to coon hunting tonight. Me and daddy and brother Rocky, we're going to coon hunting. Okay. I go buy my hunting license. I get home before she does. The phone rings. Where are you at? I'm sitting on the recliner. There's a coon in the yard. Excuse me. I'm going coon hunting tonight. No, there's a coon in the yard. And I went out, sure enough, there's a coon out there. He's all fuzzed up, humped back, and Gracie's black Labrador circling him. And he ain't running away. And I immediately I think, rabies. Got to get rid of this dude. I go get my gun. I couldn't find a bullet to save my life. A swing with those stones will do you no good. Next thing I know, I heard kabam. I looked outside, my brother was out there. He's trying to shoot him with a pistol. He couldn't even hit him. He missed him. I finally found two bullets. I was able to get rid of the possibly rabbit raccoon out of the yard. Listen, you better have ammunition if you got the swing. 
There might be a giant out there you got to slay. You better be prepared. So God, Jesus, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 6, He's about to send the twelve disciples to go forth to heal the sick, to cast out devils. Did He tell them to take a sling? Did He tell them to take bread? Did He tell them to take water? Nope. Didn't do it, did He? Chapter 6, verse 7. And He calleth unto Him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits, and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only. No scrip, no bread, no money in their purse, but be shod with sandals and not put on two coats. And he said unto them, In what place soever ye enter into a house, there abide till ye depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear you, when ye depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And they went out and preached that men should repent, and they cast out many devils, and anointed with all many that were sick, and healed them. What do you say we needed to take, Sister Bradshaw? A hook, okay. I thought you said food. I guess I had my mind on dinner. Food. Don't take no bread. Don't take no water. I got to have that, Lord. I got to eat. He'll sustain us. He'll feed us. He'll take care of us. But he said, do take your staff in your hand. Mm -hmm. So they went to preach, two by two, casting out devils, healing the sick. He said they anointed them with oil, so they had oil already with them. They had the oil. They had the staff. As of yet, they did not have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But that staff was symbolic of the power of God all through the Old Testament. Brother Mark, they went forth with the authority of Jesus Christ. Brother, man did not give you the authority to preach the Word of God. Brother Mark, a church did not give you the authority to preach the Word of God or lay hands. But God Almighty, when He called you, rather when He put the turkeys in the road around the curve, He called you. He gave you that authority. And He gave us His staff. He gave us the rod. He gave us the power of the Holy Ghost to go forth. See, Brother Connor was here the other day. His dad taught me something one time a long time ago. He said, Son, be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. He said, Boys, when you get to praying for people, don't you push them to the ground. Don't you lay your hands harshly on them, but you be gentle. You be gentle. Saints of God, that shepherd was gentle with that hook. He was gentle with that staff. And though we've got all authority and all power in heaven and earth, Sister Brenda, we've got to be gentle. And if we'll do that, we'll heal the sick. We'll cast out devils. And we'll see people saved. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd 
And he said, the good shepherd would lay down his life for the sheep. I've probably told you this story in the past, but I feel to tell it again. I mentioned Ronald Reagan. When Ronald Reagan was just a boy, his testimony was that his father was a drunkard. His father beat his mother, mean to the kids, lived in fear. In the midst of all that fear, it just so happened one day there was a, a ewe lamb come by. He made friends with that ewe lamb. That was his pet. When times was tough, he could go and talk to that lamb. Some of you might have a puppy dog or a kitty cat. He had a little lamb. When I was a kid growing up, my dad logged and he had big old two-piece truck tires for the herd. And he'd change them tires at home in the backyard and he'd have a big old hammer and a wedge and a tire changing tool and he'd poke that down in there and pull it back and spin it around take that tire off that rim Ronald's dad had a tool like that and one day working on the car he'd been drinking he got angry Ronald and his lamb came by and his dad took up that tire tool and instead of hitting Ronald with it he jabbed her right through his little lamb. And he killed the thing that he loved, the thing that comforted him. He said, when I got older, I could relate to the Lamb of God. But I deserve to die he went to the cross of Calvary. And they pierced his side <coughs> instead of mine. He's a good shepherd. He's a good shepherd. Aren't you glad to know today that Jesus loves you? Aren't you glad to know today that your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Aren't you glad to know that He sent His only Son for us? As I look through this house today, I see a house full of people that love God, serve God. I see a house full of people, though I'm not your judge, that I believe the blood of the Savior is covering your sin. The saints of God were sent forth into the world just like those disciples. We've got to take the staff in our hand. We've got the Word of God in our heart. And we've got the power of God with us. Let's go forward to this lost and dying world. And let's make a difference. Let's make a difference. You're here this morning. And you say, Pastor... I'm a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. Stand with me. I'm a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. Most everyone here is standing. I don't have a Close rod to throw at you, Brother Luke. I don't have a staff to give every one of you. But what we do have is the presence of Almighty God that will never leave us, never forsake us, and will go before us wherever we go. We've got the Holy Ghost, saints of God. We've got the power of God inside of us. Now it's up to us to go two by two 
into this world. This is what I want you to do this morning. Some of you here are couples. If you're a couple, that's good. Some of us here, we're here alone. Find you somebody if we can. I don't even know if the numbers were even numbers. But two by two, let's come to this altar. And I want us to pray one for another. God, wherever my sister goes, wherever my brother goes, let your staff go with them. Let your staff be upon them. And let them be fruitful for the kingdom of God. Everybody in here, if you're able, come. Come. If you're by yourself, find somebody. Amen. Come on up here, Sister PJ. Give Brother Harold right there, Sister PJ. Brother Harold, give Sister PJ. Come up here. Pray together. Come on, Rodney. Heavenly Father, God, today, Father, Lord, we are the people of God. Father, God, I pray, God, for my brother. I ask, Father, God, that you would be with Brother Rodney. Father, God, as he goes on that job, God, Lord, Father, God, as he's driving the nails, Father, Lord, you was a carpenter, the son of a carpenter, and God, you know the walk he's got to walk, God. Lord, I pray, Father, God, that he be a light to everyone he's around. God, that you would bless him, God. Lord, that your staff, Father, God, would be with him, God. That your power would be upon him, your anointing, God. And Lord, use him, God, in a mighty way. Glory, Heavenly Father, God, right now for my sisters. God, I pray you bless on them. I pray God fresh oil, the fresh anointing God to come upon them, God. Lord, let that shepherd staff, Father God, Lord, be upon Sister Tammy. God, let her go forth and let her be fruitful, God, for your kingdom, God. Lord, give her a harvest of young souls, God. Lord, let her be alive. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you, God, for Brother Hooper. I thank you, God, for Brother Harold, a mighty man of God. Lord, a man I look up to. And God, I pray you bless him, God. Let your staff go before him. Lord, Sister Eloise, oh God, you see this shoulder right now. God, you see the stiffness and the pain, God. But God, let your virtue flow and bring healing. God, let your staff go before Sister Eloise. God, you see Luke and Olita. Father God, let the Holy Ghost, God, go before them, anoint them, God, for the service which you've called them. God, bless them, Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord, for the anointing on their life, God. I thank you, Father God, for their prayers. God, you see, Sister Brenda, Sister Diane. God, let them go forward, God. Two by two, Father God. Lord, send us forth into that field, God. God, let us cast out devils. God, let us heal the sick. Heavenly Father God. Lord, Sister Mita, Sister Kathy. Father God, these two mighty women of faith, God. Lord, they walk in the anointed. God, they walk in the Spirit, God. Lord, you see the life they live, God. The testimony they leave behind wherever they go. God, touch Sister Kathy. Touch Sister Nita. God, bless them. Heavenly Father, God. Lord, we love you today. I thank you, God, what you joined together. A team, Father God, a ministry of prayer warriors. And God, I pray you bless them, God. Use them, Heavenly Father. God, I thank you, Lord, for Brother Harold. I thank you, God, for Sister PJ. God, touch Sister Jones this morning. God, we miss her when she's not in the house of God. And Lord God, I thank you, God, for Brother West and Sister Jones' testimony. God, touch them today. God, let them go forth, God, in this ministry, God. And God,